All right, a little update here on the Derp ATV project. As you can tell, I got all the five pieces done. Bolted up, pretty much tacked together right now. But for the most part, the bolts are holding fine. As you can tell, you got your bolted interfaces on the front section. You got five bolts on this side, five bolts on that side. As you can tell, I got the belly plate done too. Essentially what it is is just a flat sheet with a skeleton of box section. So that will carry my exhaust gases to each wheel end, just like how the Sherp does it. You can see each tube that protrudes that will take it through a silicone elbow into the final wheel end to inflate and deflate the tires. So, got that done. And you can kind of tell the bolted interfaces for the skid plate to the chain boxes to hold that together. You got one there, one there, one there, and one there. And then your bolting interface for the rear section is on the back here. You got five bolts on this side and five bolts on that side. Of course, I just <laughs> removed some of them because I didn't need them in the first place. So, in the future, I'm going to have to do some through bolts to make it work better. But, it's a learning experience here. Got some tack bars I'm running across just to give it some more stiffness as I roll it around for better welding positions. But yeah, from a tolerance standpoint, it actually came out pretty square in just the bolted, uh, in the bolted condition. I mean, from a parallel standpoint, I'm only a sixteenth off. Corner to corner, I'm only an eighth inch off. And then from a 90 degree standpoint, I'm about a sixteenth off from the bottom to the top here from a width standpoint. So I was pretty happy with those tolerances, so I decided to just stitch everything together and start to do the final burn off here to make things nice and watertight and structurally sound. Overall, it's a pretty light unit, unit here. The cherry picker really didn't have any issues and I could just flip it around on my own to be honest. But I had a little help with the, the cable winch here to, to come along to pull her around center of gravity to get her to flip. But yeah, uh, one of the big changes I'll do in the future on perhaps a pilot model is uh, give this a little bit of an overlap so that way your sheeting can kind of splice on top of it. It'll be a lot better than trying to fill in all these gaps that are going on. Because right now I designed it to be perfectly in line with the chain box, which of course you get these gaps. I mean, it's not the end of the world, it's just going to be a pain in the butt. Slap some steel in there to burn it off. But yep, got all this thing. Uh, I guess it's kind of interesting. Hopefully you won't be able to see this in the field in this position. That will be a bad deal if you flipped around our side, but never say never, right? But yeah, besides the weldment there, well, hold on. I did get the bumper done too, some uh, two inch pipe right there. I got some uh, D-rings coming in too that I'm going to weld on for recovery points. Um, I did get one of my final dry sprockets welded up. I ran out of welding gas so I couldn't really do much after the fact. Got some of my exhaust adapters kind of welded up too, along with the tensioner components for the chain drive system. Like I said, it's a lot of little knickknack stuff that I got done too, so. Slowly gaining, slowly gaining. I think from a change standpoint, that's about it. I mean, the, the gaps that are going on and perhaps thickening the plates right here that mount the, the, mount the bolts on the chain boxes. That's only a 16th inch steel. That'll probably get changed to like 3 16ths just to make it a little more rigid and stiff. So that way when you bolt this thing together, it wants to just clamp right down. But yeah, what, I, what it turned out with the, uh, the interface here, it just turned out that the... Uh, the fillet weld was interfering with the bend radius. Turns out I uh, misjudged the bend radius. It's a little bit smaller than I anticipated, so it was actually interfering. So all I had to do is just go back with the angle grinder, buzz down the reinforcement off the weld, and she bolted nice and clean, as you can tell here.